host June Harmon. Call in and we'll work those calculus problems together. Let's meet my student assistant for today. I'm Quincy Valverde. I'm in Ms. Harmon's calculus class at WTY, WTY High School. I plan to attend the University of North Texas. Quincy, why don't you remind the students about the rules? Avoid feedback by using the telephone in the classroom. Cell phones do not work. Turn down the set a little when you are on the air and sit back and relax. We are counting down the days until the AP Calculus exam on May the 3rd. Let's get ready to rumble! Y'all ready for this? Quincy, who's our first caller? Our first caller is Sergio from Molina High School. Hey, Sergio. Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. How's Ms. Brzezinski? Uh, she's doing fine. Is the ice cream good? Uh, not yet. Not we're, yet. We're oh. still waiting for it. We better get to work then so you get that ice cream. Alrighty. All right, Sergio, i got a problem for you. Okay. okay. Let's see if we can get it up. All right, we've got a function. 3x cubed minus 36x minus 3. I would like for you to classify the critical points using the second derivative test if possible. Is that possible, do you think? Yes. Okay, tell me what to do first. Uh, take the first derivative. Oh, I forgot, Sergio. I've got to show your picture. Hold on. Oh, okay. There. Yeah. Looking very nice. <laughs> Good shots of you guys. Yeah. Okay, now now give me the calculus. What do we need first? Uh, F prime. F prime. Equals. Bring it down, bring it down. All right, bring it down, bring it down. What does that give you? 9x squared. 9x squared is perfect. Minus, uh, wait, 36. What do you think, Sergio? Is that good? Uh, yes. That is very good. Say it again. It's 9x squared minus 36. Perfect. Now, what do you need to do to find the critical points? Sometimes they call them critical numbers. Oh, set, set the function equal to zero. All right. You want to do anything to it? Oh, pull it out. What would you like to pull out? Uh, nine. All right. Tell me what to write. It's nine parentheses x squared minus 4. Can you tell the critical numbers now? Yes. What are they? It's, uh, let me get it real quick. Wait, it's... Does Ms. Brzezinski have you factor some more, or do you just yeah, go uh, Yes, that's it. Uh, x equals positive or negative 2. Good job. Two critical numbers. Now, how do we use the second derivative test to see what they are? We're thinking max min talk, right? Yes. Okay. What's your second derivative? It's, oh, it's a 18x, and that's it. And that's it? Yes, and plug in 2 to the, to the second derivative. All right. What do you get? It's a... a 36. Say it again. 36. 36 is perfect. What does that tell you? That, uh, the concavity. That's right. What is the concavity? It's up. Up. Concave, Concave up. up. So yes. x equals 2 is a what? Uh, min point. Very uh, good. Min. If you've got min. concave up for your function, your extrema is a min point, your relative uh, extrema. Good job. Keep going. Plug in uh, neg negative 2. What do you get? It's negative 36. What does that tell you? It's uh, concave down, and it's a relative max. You did a beautiful job. You're going to get the bell for that. Yeah. Hey, Sergio, thank you for calling in. You guys call back, OK? Here's our next caller, Quincy. Our next caller is Bridget from Carter. Hey, Bridget. How you doing, Miss Harmon? How are you doing at Carter? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing very well. How's Miss Blackwell? She's fine as usual. As usual. She is always fine, isn't she? Yes, ma'am. Excellent. Are you ready for a problem? Yes, ma'am. I am. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, Bridget, y'all send me some pictures, okay? <laughs> yes, ma'am. We'll make sure. All right. I've got two integrals. Bridget, are you a BC student or an AB? AB. AB? Okay. 
These are just up your alley, I think. Here we go. Coming soon. All right. Do you know how to do the integral of the cosine of 4x? Yes, ma'am. How do you do that? Okay. First, I know I can use u substitution on this. Excellent. And in this problem, my u would be 4x, and my du is 4dx. And now, I have to fix it. Okay, I like what you said. You, did I get it right? Your u is 4x. Yes, you took a derivative. Yes, All right, now what do you want to do? Okay, now I have to fix it, so I have to make that a 1 fourth du. 1 fourth du. Why are you doing that? You're exactly right, but why are you doing that? Because I need the dx on its own. Right, dx is on its own right there. Good job. Keep going. I'm going to move my paper a little bit. Okay, now what I can do is put that 1 fourth on the outside of the integral. All right. And cosine of u. Cosine of u? Du. Du. Which so, is really not bad, is it? No, ma'am. No. So what do you get? So now I will have one fourth sine four x. You went ahead and substituted back. Good yes, job. And one more thing. Plus c. Yay! My, my vitamin C is with Miss Blake. Vitamin C. <laughs> that is exactly right. You got to have that plus C to make it work. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for calling in. You did a great job. Thank you. Thanks. Y'all call back. Bye. Bye bye. Now, now we have one? Yvette from Sunset. Hi, Yvette. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Hello. Hi, Yvette. Yes. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing very well. Guess where I graduated from high school? Excuse me? Guess where I graduated from high school? From Sunset? Yes, I did. Thank oh, you. Oh, that's Ooh. awesome. Lead purple. Lead purple here. Me and the superintendent, right? Let me show your picture. Oh, yes. no. You look great. I love the way y'all got those shadows going in the bison. Is that Ooh. you, Yvette? Yes, ma'am. All right. Wow. 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 You look pretty good. I've got a question for you. You ready? It's a graph. Do you like graphs? Uh, yeah. Here's what I want you to tell me. This is a picture of the function f. I'm going to list that three times so you know that I'm telling the truth. That's f. Okay? Okay. okay. All right. Can you tell me f of zero, whether it's positive, negative, or zero? f prime of zero and f double prime of zero and of course when x is zero we're looking right about here aren't we i'm looking for the signs plus minus zero kind of answers so f of zero is what kind of number positive it's positive you could even tell me the number couldn't you yes of course that's right what about the derivative at at zero what's it Positive. What's the derivative? The first derivative? The it's slope? the rate of change. Say it again. What? It's the slope of the tangent line. That's right. The slope of the tangent line. And what is it? Positive or negative? It's positive. Going this way? It's negative. Ah, there you go. Thank I'm you. sorry. That's quite all right. It's negative. Now the last one is the second derivative. So what are you looking at? It's up at the tangent line going uh, down. For the second derivative, we're looking at the con. It's concaving up. Oh, that's right, concaving up, so we've got a plus. Oh, yes. So that's a question off of an old AP exam. All you had to do was look and tell them what the signs were like. Not bad, right? Not too bad, anyway. Okay. Hey, you guys call back, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Here's our next call, Quincy. Next we have Avante from Lincoln High School. Avante, how are you doing? Avante, hello. How are you? Fine. How are you? I'm fine. How's Lincoln? It's uh, good. How's Miss Etheridge? She's a uh, good teacher. She is, isn't she? she uh, said hi. Pardon me? She said hi. She said hi. Well, I say hi back. Hello, everybody. Listen, uh, she's got a student host lined up for me. Tell her I'm going to email her and get those details. Okay. 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 All right. You ready for a problem? Yes, ma'am f of x equals x times the sine of x, and I want the first derivative. Are you good at first derivatives? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go for it. Okay, um, well, 
on that roof. Say it again. I probably just didn't hear you. We're going to use the product rule. Yes, use the product rule. Thank you very much. Tell me what you use yes, for product rule. Do you mind stating it for the audience? Okay, you have the first one. The first one. Times the derivative of the second one. Okay. Plus the derivative of the first one times the second one. Very good. First times derivative of the second, and this is the U, and this is the V, right? Oh. Okay. It wouldn't really matter, would it? I could turn it around. All right. Go for it. Okay. Now, X. X. Uh, cosine of V. Very good. The derivative of sine is cosine. Hello. One. I'm going to write that. I think that's a good idea. Cosine is. So there's not much to clean up, is there? X cos of X plus sine of X. You did a great job with your product rule. We sometimes forget those rules if we haven't used them in a few days, right? But we got to keep them at the forefront. All right. All right, listen, thank you for calling in. You guys call back. Here's our next caller, Quincy. Our next caller is Sally. Hey, Sally. Hi, Ms. Harmon. Hi, from which school? I'm in your classroom, so we can wait. What is that? I got yeah, into a lot. Excellent. Did you find somebody to let you in the room? Um, no, I came. I like rest home after school. Oh, well, good. Thank you for doing that. Did you say <laughs> hi, Quincy? <laughs> hi, Quincy. Hi, Sally. There you go. Thank you for calling in, Sally. Okay, you want to work a problem? We got one for you here. Can you see okay. the screen okay? Uh-huh. All right. Tell me what to do. I want a derivative. Okay. Use the quotient rule, right? That's right. So would you would you mind telling me the quotient rule so I can write it down? Um, I kind of forgot how to do these. That's um, okay. Oh. Quincy will help you. We're going to help you. Okay. How about V with U prime? Uh-huh. Take away U with V prime okay. over V squared. Of course, this is U, and that's V. Okay, now, so it'd be, it'd be um, sine of S times one. Mm-hmm. Good. Uh, minus uh, x and times cosine of x. You did that very well. And then? Um, over um, sine x squared. Sine x squared. And I could do it that way, couldn't I? Yeah. And I'm going to rewrite it to make it look pretty. Sine of x minus x cos of x okay. over sine squared. Good job. That looks beautiful. Okay. Thank you for working that quotient rule for us. Okay. Will I get extra credit with Carmen? Absolutely. You get tons of extra credit. Yay. Thank okay. you for calling in. Okay. Bye, Bye, -bye. Bye. Who's our next caller, Quincy? Our next caller is Jose from Carter High School. Hey, Carter. Jose? Yes. Hi. How are you? Fine. Anything exciting going on at Carter? Yeah, we're eating snacks. You're eating snacks? <laughs> I love it. What kind of snacks did Ms. Blackwell bring? Honey bun. <gasps> wow, my favorite. Now, did you guys have anybody like sign yesterday? Any that signing thing that's going on? Yes, yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of press about that, wasn't it? Yeah. That's good. All right, you ready to work a problem? Yeah, of course. Okay. I like this problem. Do you like this problem? Yes. Derivative of the integral. Is your brain working furiously? Yes, it always is. Oh, yeah, yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how to work this problem? Yes. Tell me what to do. Well, I know the U is the squared. <laughs> well, plug in X. You know, I say it again. I had some static and I didn't hear it. It wasn't you, it was me. Plug in X squared for T. Is that what you said? Yes. All right. Plug okay. in x squared for t. Yes. Now, what else do I need to do? Multiply by 2x. Multiply by 2x. Where on earth did you get 2x? You're right. Where'd you get it? The derivative of x squared. There you go. It's Ooh. plug it in and do the chain out from up here. I like how you didn't chain out from here. That would have been a mistake, wouldn't it? You chained out from the plug-in. 
You did a great job. Would you like to know how many students got this right on the last AP exam that they released to us? What percent do you think got this right? Well, everybody. Everybody. Guess what? 29% got it right. It was a very hard question. You just got it right without any effort at all, right? So that puts you ahead of the curve, doesn't it? Yep. 29% got this right on the last... Does that kind of just stun you? Well, yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm stunned. You did a beautiful job. So keep up the good work. You're going for a five, aren't you? Yeah, of yeah, course. I can tell. Hey, thanks for calling in. Good job, Jose. Who's our next caller, Quincy? Our next caller is Brian from Molina High School. Oh, yeah. It's fine so far. Well, that's a good, good cautious assessment. Here we go. Got Brian. Excellent. <laughs> wow. Hey, Brian. You know what's going on February 25th? Uh, not that I remember. Well, Quincy knows. Quincy, tell us what's going on February 25th. There is a big math prep session on Saturday, February 25th, from 9 to 2:30 at Town View Center. You coming? Yeah. Making your plans, huh? I think you would. That's why I asked on here. So if you said no, I'd have felt bad, wouldn't I? Mm. You said yes. <coughs> All right, here we go. Let me get it focused for you. Classify the critical points using the second derivative test, if possible. I like this question because they, they can ask it in different ways, and we all know how to do it, I hope. How do we do it? Uh, take the first, der first derivative. Take a first derivative. Good idea. What is the first derivative? Uh, uh, 3x square. Great. Plus, oh, and the uh, quotient rule for the second. One? And the quotient rule. You could do a quotient rule, or you could rewrite this as x to the minus 1. How about that? That would be better. Would that be okay? Either way works. You're fine. And so when you take the derivative here, what do you get? Negative x uh, to the negative second power. Good job. Now let's rewrite that. 3x squared minus, oops, messed up, 1 over x squared. Does that work? Did I get it right even though I've got a little erasure there? I forgot my white out today, okay? Yes. All fine. right. Well, we know at x equals 0, we've got issues, haven't we? We've got issues with the fun. What's going on at 0? x equals 0. Uh, you get an asymptote. We got an asymptote. So x equals 0 is not even in our domain, is it? No. But it is the place where things can happen. It's not in the domain, but things can happen. All right, now let's keep going. We need to find the critical numbers. We know x equals 0 is important, but it's not in the domain, actually. So what else? How are we going to find critical numbers? Make a 3x into a fraction, or 3x squared. Okay, we could do that. What do you want to do? Tell me again. Can uh, we set equal to zero? Would that get us our critical numbers? Yeah. Let's try that. Can I move this one over? Yeah. Uh, 3x squared, yeah, that would be fine. All right. Can I multiply across by this? Yes. What would that give me? 3x squared. Times x squared again? Yes. What would that be? To the fourth. Good job. Now I'm trying to solve for x, so what do I need to do with that little 3? Uh, divide by, this divided by 130 equals Good. X. And then what does that give me? If I don't want x to the fourth, I'd really like x. What does that give me? Take the fourth root. That's right. And what else do I need to put out front? Uh, plus or minus. That was such a hard problem. I think I'm going to let us call it quits at that. What do you think? Was that too hard? Uh, but we haven't answered the question just we yet. We have not. You want to keep going, don't you? <laughs> I can tell. Yes. All right. How are we going to keep going? Tell me what we need to do. The question said use the second derivative. Do we have a second derivative? No. Let's go back up here to our first derivative. Can we get a second derivative? Yes. What do we get? Let me draw a little line here. Second derivative? Would be 6x. Six, six Good. 
need to rewrite this as yes, x minus x to the minus 2. Yes, which would, would be give us? plus 2x to the negative third part. Very good. I'm going to go ahead and put it down here if that's okay with you. Fine. Excellent. Now, what do I need to do with these little numbers? Uh, plug them into the second derivative. Do we know what the fourth root of a third is? Mm, Yikes. No. But we know one's positive and one's negative. Is that enough? If I plug a positive in here and a positive in here, what do I get? Positive. That's right. So the positive one-third gives me a positive second derivative. So I know my function is concave up. up and therefore, this is a uh, relative minimum. Very good. And then we do the same thing with the negative. I really don't know what that is, but I know it's negative. That would give me what here? Negative. Negative what here? Again, a negative. Oh, well, then that's case closed, right? Negative, second derivative. Function is concave. Down. Down. Therefore, this is a... Well, it's just max. Yeah, you did a great job. You made me keep going. I was ready to quit, but I didn't. We kept going. Good job. I think that's a bell, Quincy. Give us the bell here. Excellent. Thanks. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Persevering on that problem. Who's our next caller, Quincy? Our next caller comes from Sunset High School. Hector? Hey, Hector. Hello. 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 Yeah, I'm here. Hector, are you a senior or a junior? Senior. You're a senior. Where are you going to go next year? I'm going to Texas A&M. Texas A&M. Oh, hullabaloo, connect, connect, right? Yep. Do you know the Aggie War hymn yet? Nah, not yet. I would sing it for you, but not today. Whoa, that was cool. I see Hector's picture. Oh. Okay. Here it comes. Nah. Ready or not. Excellent, Hector. Ah, uh, wow. You look pretty cool. Right you're going to make a great Aggie. True? Yeah. Yes. What are you going to major in? Uh, I'm thinking about mechanical engineering. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. What are you going to major in? Mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. That's excellent. I hope you make tons of money. Quincy, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if you can see this very well, Hector. Uh, I can see. <laughs> there we go, I'm better now. Quincy, can you see my... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm calling you Quincy. Hector, can you see my graph? Oh, now I can. All right, is that better? Yeah. All right. I'm going to ask you about the limit at some locations. Uh, at what? zero, does this function have a limit? At zero? Yeah, it has a limit. Is there a limit at zero? Yeah. Yes, there is. So the limit at zero appears to be zero, right? Yes. Is there a limit at negative three? No. Now, are you thinking derivative or limit? Uh, it's as, as the function approaches from both sides, does it come to a location? Yeah. So there is a limit at negative 3, and it appears to be what number? 1. 1. Good job. Is there a limit at 1? Yes. Yeah, that's just an easygoing function. Is there a limit at negative 2? No. Why not? Tell me what's wrong. There's a jump. That's right. There's a jump discontinuity. If yeah. the limit from the left does not match the limit from the right, then we don't have a limit, do we? We, what do we say for the limit here? We say it... Um, six. Can you repeat that question? What do we say when the, when the limit is like this and there isn't one? What is it we say? The oh, limit... is DNE. DNE does not exist. That's right. Does not exist as a limit. And over here, we've got to remember the difference in continuity and differentiability. Yeah. You did a great job with that. Hey, thanks, thanks for calling in. Yeah. You guys call back. Yeah. Who's our next caller, Quincy? Our next caller comes from Lincoln. Antoinette? Hi, Antoinette. Are you there? Antoinette? We're going to our next caller. And Antoinette, you call back. If we got hung up, we want to fix that. Our next caller also comes from Lincoln High School, and her name is Jasmine. Hey, Jasmine. Hello. Hi, Jasmine. How are oh, you? Oh, it's not Lincoln. Carter. It's Carter. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Let's get that straight because if you win the lucky gift card, I don't want to take it to the wrong school, right? That would be sad. All right. I've got a problem for you. It's Have you done fundamental theorem of calculus? That sounds really important, doesn't yes. it? Yes, we have. Yes, you have. All right. I knew you had. All right. No problem. Let the function f be defined as the integral from 0 to x of the sine of t, cosine of t, dt. Oh, I gave you the wrong one. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me get the right one. Well, 
Here we go. Got to start with this one. Same setup. This is the function, the integral from 0 to x, sine of t, cosine of t, dt. What are critical numbers for the function f? What do you need to find to do critical numbers, Jasmine? The derivative. The derivative. If this is the function, how do you take the derivative of the integral? You plug in x for t. Oh, could it get any easier? Sine of x, cosine of x equals the derivative. Good job. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know that because it was a low scoring question on the last test. So I'm glad you know it. All right, now to find critical numbers, you set this equal to what? Zero. Okay. Do you know how to get that into something that makes sense? These are factors. What does that tell you? Which one could be zero? Anyone could be zero. Yeah, either one of them. If the sine of x is zero, in a minute we're going to think about the x's. If the cosine of x is zero, we're going to think about. So if the sine is zero, what kind of x's could those be? Just give me a few. Zero and zero. pi. Pi. Good job. You could keep going, right? Two pi, yes. three pi, four pi, five. You could keep on going. Okay, good. So I'm just going to put dots because I'm, we're going to just not limit it right now. When is the cosine zero? Pi half and three half pi. Very good. And again, that keeps on going. Good job. The key was knowing that the derivative was sitting right there waiting on you to notice, right? And the Mills Theorem of Calculus pays every time. You know, math, math majors are going to rule the world, right? I saw that in an article on, online, that math majors are going to rule the world. So there you go. Thank you for calling in. Who's our next caller, Quincy? Our next caller is Jasmine from Carter High School. Oh, sorry. Addie. Where are you from, Addie? Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson, yay! Anything going on at Woodrow I need to know about? Oh, we're having calculus party. Calculus party. Y'all just have all the fun. Right? How's Mr. Irving? Oh. Um, he's good. Has he earned his doctorate yet in some fantastic subject? No. He's working on it, huh? What do you say? I can hear it. I thought maybe he had earned a graduate degree since, oh, no, not yet. since I've been there. <laughs> since I've been there the last time. All right, how are you at absolute value problems using geometry? Are you a good geometry student? Uh, yeah, Excellent. sure. Excellent. All right, let's do that. I want the integral from negative three to three of x plus two dx. What do you need to do? Oh, you wow. need to split That's up the heavy. equation to two equations, so it's negative x plus two and then x plus two. Good job. And then the equation negative x plus 2 is going to be used for values big or less than 0. All right, less than 0, but maybe what else since it's x plus 2? Oh, um. Maybe move it over how many? 2. 2. So maybe from negative 3 to negative 2 would be this one? Yes. Does that sound okay? Yes. Let's look at the graph real quick. If I go 2 plus 2, that means 2 to the left, right? Right. So your break comes at negative 2. So good job. Now, and I'm going to put a dx. Is that okay? Sure. Next, what's next? Okay, um, this one is from negative 2 to 3. Yeah. Good job. All right. You want me to make this negative x minus 2, two. dx? Would that be better? Yes. Okay. All right. Tell me what to do. Then you need to find the integral of that. And what would that be? Negative x squared over 2 minus 2x. With plug-ins. True. And the next equation would be um, x squared over 2 plus 2x. Again, with plug-ins. All right, how are we at plug-ins? Good. Okay, you plug in negative 2 to, to x. So that gives me what? 4 over, over two. 2 plus okay. 4. Plus 4, good. Take away. Um, wait. Uh, I can't do the numbers. Okay, um, wait, what were the, what was the right here? 
Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, not negative nine over two. That sounds good. Minus plus six. So far, so good. I think we're doing okay. Now, what you want to keep going on this one? Yes. Okay. okay. Plus um, nine over two plus six. Good. Take minus away. four over two plus four. Is it a negative? Oh, minus four. Thank you. I was about to put the wrong thing. Uh, let me see if I can get where you can see what I've got here. All right. Woo, lots of work here. All right, can we clean this up? Yes, negative two plus four minus plus uh, nine over two plus six. Uh, minus minus six. six. Oh, okay, distribute three. All right, good. And I'll write these for you. Nine over two plus six. Now these? Minus two plus four. Excellent. Now, what can we do? Um, you can cancel out the sixes. Alrighty. And to start putting stuff and together? I, yes. Four and four makes how eight, much? Eight. Now I'm going to cancel them, not because they canceled, because I've used them. What else? Um, negative two minus two is negative four. Okay. And then nine eight, halves and nine eight, halves? Eight over two is nine. Nine. Nine, nine and eight is how much? Um, <laughs> Take away four is? Yes. Thirteen. Woo, you got it. And you did exactly what you need to do. If you were going to do it with calculus, you needed to set up your absolute value so that you could integrate two different pieces. Okay? Okay. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. You guys call back. Who's next, Quincy? Next we have Rosemere from Molina High School. Hello. Fine, thank you. Uh, is calculus your favorite subject? Uh, it's going to be. It is going to be. Excellent. I thought it was. I just had a feeling you were going to say that. All right, here we go. It's Rosemary. Here's your picture. Oh. Ah, wow. That's yeah, pretty cool. I think it's a beautiful picture. It is a beautiful, it's a beautiful picture. I do too. Now, did Ms. Brzezinski just go find all the good-looking people to take calculus at Molina? Is that how it works? Yes, of course. All the really gorgeous people, right? That's what yeah. I was thinking. All right, here we go. I've got. I'm trying to find you a really special, special problem. Okay. Let's see if I can find a very special problem here. I have lots of special problems, don't I? Yeah. All right, I've got one here. This will be fun. Okay. All right, let's see if I can zoom in a little so you can see better. If yeah. I have y equals 1 minus x over x minus 1, then dy dx equals... Okay, you're looking for the derivative? I'm looking for the derivative. Good job. Um, we're going to do the quotient rule. Okay. Tell me, you want to tell me the rules, so I'll write it down for everybody. Um, Hody high. D high minus high D ho minus high D ho over ho squared. Ho squared. Ho D high, that's the derivative of high, yes. minus high D ho over ho squared. And this is high and this is ho, right? Yes. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Parentheses x minus 1. <laughs> Um, times 1 minus x. Now the oh, no, derivative no. of this one. Um, negative 1. Negative 1. Good job. A lot of people miss that. Minus. Minus. Come to the main office. Press the office to quit making announcements. Okay. Maria Gutierrez, please come to the main office. Maria Gutierrez, please come to the main office. You can't hear, can you? Bless your heart. Okay. The parentheses. Parentheses. 1 minus x. So it's parentheses. Uh, times negative one. No, one. Times one. Good job. Over, Over. x minus one squared. All right, let's clean it up. Okay. Um, distribute the negative one. Okay. Negative x plus one. Great. Minus one plus x. All over x minus one squared. What does that equal? Uh, zero. All that work for nothing? Yes. Why did it turn out like that? The, in the numerator, they all cancel out. Yeah, they all cancel out in the numerator. Look what happens if I pull a minus 1 out of this. 
what does that give me? If I pull a minus one out of here, what does that give me? Um, negative one. Yeah, and what's the derivative of negative one? Zero. See, isn't that a cool problem? I love that yeah. problem, because this is what I would do too. I'd take the quotient rule. But when I got a zero, it made me suspicious that something was going on. Yeah. Didn't you think? Yep. You did a great job. You did. You lined it out perfectly. You'll do really well. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Problem. Thank you. Aww. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Who's our next caller? Antoinette from Lincoln High School. Hi, Antoinette. How are you? Did we get disconnected a while ago? Huh? Did we get disconnected a while ago? Yes, we did. Well, I'm so sorry. I'm really glad you called back. Uh -huh. That happens sometimes, you know? Yeah, I understand. How are you at Area Under Curves? No. No? Nuh-uh. You sure? I'm positive. How about if I help you? How about what? How about if I help you with it? Can I we talk haven't got there yet at all. Oh, well, then never mind. Let me find uh, another uh, problem. How's this? Does this look better? No. No. We are transcendental. You know, <laughs> transcendental. Ooh, you're way ahead of the game. Oh, I bet she did this. We did earlier. We did transcendental earlier. Oh, well, good for you. I'm impressed. So y'all are just smoking it, huh? Just really moving along. Well, I tell you what, if you don't like either one of these, you're hard to please today. You're not really hard to please, are you? Here we go. I got one for you with concave up and down and increasing, decreasing. How's that sound? Does that suit you okay? Yes, that's right. All right. All right. I want you to, I want you to be happy, okay? <laughs> All right. What do you need to do to talk about increasing first? Okay. That's the first derivative. That is a first derivative. Can you tell me what the first derivative is? Hold on, but can we rewrite this? <laughs> you wish you can. What would you like to say? Y equals x plus x to the negative one. I think that's a great idea. Rewrite it because I need powers when I take derivatives. All right, now tell me what to write. Okay. Y prime equals one. One. Minus x. Say it again. I just didn't hear you. One minus x. Hello. I, I, go right ahead. I, there's a little static. It's not you. It's on my end. But if you'll say it again, I'll try to catch it. Um, Minus one down front. Yes. And take away. One. That looks good. Is that what she said? Yes, I All did. right, good. And then what would that... Now we'll keep that here because that will come in handy in a minute. Okay. One minus. One over x squared. Good job. Now we know at x equals zero, we got something going on, right? Yes, we do. There's nothing, there's a, what, well, tell, you tell me, what is going on at x equals zero? It's undefined, it's not in the domain. That's right, not in the domain. It's a domain issue. We got a little asymptote going on, right? So this zero is not going to bother us except because we're already thinking about it. So how are we going to set the derivative equal to zero to check for increasing? Okay. I'll rewrite it down here so we've got room to work. All right, how do I get this to where I can solve it? Um, we're going to move it over. Yes, we are. You want to move this piece over? Yes. 1 over x squared equals 1. Now what are you going to do? Um, switch them around. That's right. <laughs> I like the way you put it. <laughs> switch them around. Multiply across, right? And if x squared is 1, what does that make x equal? 1. Or? Or negative one. Good job. Plus or minus one. Now we need to draw a little number line so we can see what's going on. We've got minus one. And I'm going to put zero even though the derivative is undefined there and the function's undefined. That's where things can change, right? Yes. The derivative tells me about my function. Here's my derivative right here, okay? Okay. So can we plug in numbers on either side? Yes. Where do you want to start? We started at negative two. Say it again. Plug in negative 2. I like negative 2. That'll go right here. Negative 2 mm -hmm. is 1 minus a fourth. I've got positive, positive. functions going. Increasing. There you go. Increasing. Good. What's between negative 1 and 0? Negative 0.5. Negative 0.5. Negative a half. So I have 1 minus 1 over negative a half squared. Well, that's going to be a fourth, isn't it? Yes. And a fourth, when I invert, is going to be a four upstairs, and that's going to be what kind of number? A negative. There you go. Function's going down. Now plug in. What happens when I plug in a fourth or a half? 
It'll be negative. It'll be negative again. Good job. And then what happens when I plug in a 2? It's going to be positive. Great. You analyze that very well. So we want increasing. Well, I've got two places where the function's increasing. So I've got two places to consider right now. Okay, now how do I get concave down? You take the second derivative. That's right. I'm going to write the first derivative back for you so you can see it. Can you pull the paper up? I sure can. Thank you for asking. Thank you. How's that? I, I rewrote it like you had it earlier so you could see it down here. Now let's take the second derivative. Okay. That's going to be uh, a positive 2. That's right. Times x to the negative 3. Good job, which is 2 over x cubed. x cubed. Where's my number that I seem to care about? 0. That's right. 0. And what's going to happen if x is positive, then this is what? Positive. So my second derivative, then my function is concave up. And if x is negative, then this goes... Negative. My function is concave down. Now, I've kind of scribbled all over this, but they wanted increasing and concave down. Concave down has to be less than 0. So which of these is less than 0 and increasing? between negative infinity and negative one. You did a beautiful job. That was a complicated problem. That is beautiful. Thanks. You're, you're going for a five, aren't you? Yes, I am. Excellent. Hey, I'm not making a six. No, you <laughs> <laughs> they haven't you a six. They've never given a six before, but it could happen, right? You never know. Thank you for calling in. Miss Harmon. Bye-bye. Oh, do you know who's coming right tomorrow to one of our DISD campuses? I do not know. Who is coming to a DISD campus? The president. Anyone? Anyone? The president. Mr. W. The President of the United States of America. Which campus is he coming to, Quincy? <laughs> Science and Engineering Magnet. Quincy told that me one. earlier so I'd have it in my head. Isn't that fabulous? What a great day. We're all going to watch the newspaper and we're, well, we're going to watch the TV and read the newspaper. Maybe do it that way instead. <laughs> that's very exciting to have the President come to highlight work that's going on in our district. That's really cool, don't you think? I think it's very cool. All right, Quincy, what have we got going on? Who's calling? Next, we have Nyla from Carter High School. Hey, Nyla. Hello. Thank you guys for calling in. You're welcome. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. You're welcome. Let me see if I can find something right here. Here we go. I've got a little word problem for you. you like wordy problems? Yes. Okay, good. The rate of change of the volume V of water in a tank with respect to time t is, that's where the equal goes, right? Inversely proportional to the square of the volume. Write the differential equation that describes this relation. Do you know what they're talking about? Yes. Okay, what are they talking about? First, first you have to uh, know the formula for value. Okay, tell me what to do with rate of change of the volume. Rate of change is your derivative. That's right, dv dt. Yeah. And you know what? I don't have to know any more than that to write the rate of change of the volume, do I? No. I said, said the rate of change of the, I don't know, P. I could do it like that, couldn't I? Yeah. All right. Is equal. Now, do you know how to write inversely proportional? Do you know where to put the K? K over T. Oh, man, you're great. Whoa. Over, now, <laughs> it's the square of the volume. How do I write the square of the volume? B squared. B squared. All right, let's see if we got it. The rate of change of the volume uh -huh. is inversely proportional to the square of the volume. That's it. That's all you got to do on that problem. Really? Yeah, you were thinking you'd have to do a lot more. Yeah, time. baby. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was really a translation problem. Could you translate the words mm -hmm. into something that you could write down every little piece of it? The rate of change, you knew that was derivative, you did well. And a lot of people have forgotten inversely proportional, they've forgotten that K over, but you didn't. You're right. I'm impressed. Thank you. Thank hey, you for calling in. You easy. did a great job. Thank you. Hey, Quincy, who's next? Now we have Chris from Skyline. Hey, Chris, are you there? Yeah, I'm right here. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing fine, too. Thank you. I've got a problem for you. I need to cover up part of it because we wrote on some of it, so let me cover it up. Okay. You do know how to do integration, right? Sure. Of course. All right, here's one. What do you think? Can you integrate x cos of x squared minus 5 dx? Yeah, I think we can do something. Okay, tell me what to do. 
Okay, we can do you substitution. Yeah, it's going to be you substitution. I like the way you talk. Thank you. <laughs> What's next? Okay, the, your U is going to be X squared minus 5. Good choice. And your DU is going to be 2X DX. Excellent. Now what? And then you would... And then you would get the DX by itself. No, okay. no, no, never mind. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay. Wait, yeah. hold the phone, you say. Yeah. Did you notice We're this? We're going to get that 2 on the outside of the uh, integration. And it's okay. going to be 1 half. Let me write it this way. Some of our some students write it this way and some don't. So oh, I'm going to okay. say X DX is up there and the DU over 2 will work. And you just said write 1 half out front. You're exactly yeah. right. Yeah, do the integral of what? Integral of... X. Cosine, cosine U, DU. U, DU. Okay, I can't see the TV, man. I'm sorry, I'm running off the page. That's my fault. How's that? Okay. One half integral of cos of U, DU. Yeah. That is beautiful. You noticed that X and DX could go together. They put it out front to try to trick you, don't you think? Yeah, they try. Not trick you, though. All right, what's the integral of cos? The integral of cosine is sine. Very good. Sign of, I'm going to leave room. Tell me what to fill in. Uh, X squared minus 5. And don't forget plus? Plus C. Like the end of my name, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That is a beautiful <laughs> job. If you can do that, you are way ahead of the game. <laughs> you did a great job. Hey, thank you for calling in. Thank you. Can I, can I get a little uh, good sign? Can you do what? Huh? Can you say what? Can I get an animation voice or something? Oh, uh, don't we have an animation voice? Uh, I don't know. We got a bell. How's that? All right. We got All a bell. right. I could get Quincy to do something <laughs> if I you know, was nice enough. I did. Thank you for calling Thank in. You. We'll try to get a sound effect for you next time. Quincy, who's on the line? Now we have Andy from W.T. White High School. Go Hawaii Horns. Hey, Andy. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Andy, hey. you're in Mr. Brown's class. It sounds like Mr. Brown to me. <laughs> you want to work a problem, Mr. Brown? Yes, I do. You want to work a problem? All right, let me get one for you. Let's get a real good one here. Give me an easy one. All right, here you go. We got some students at MIT. They got a cold virus called F of T. That's the number of students that have the cold virus. Can you tell me what's happening to those students if the first derivative is positive and the second derivative is negative? What's happening to the number of students catching that virus? Okay, so F of T is the number of students. That's right. This so is the F number of students catching the virus. So and the first, say it again. F prime is greater than zero. F prime is greater than zero and F then double the is less is than increasing. zero. What does that mean the function's doing? The number of students that have the virus is increasing. Is so increasing, that's it. right. The first rate of it is yes. positive. And what else is happening? At However, a what rate? it's increasing at a decreasing rate. Good job. So there's more of them getting sick, right? But right. it's doing what? It's slowing down. It's slowing down. Thank you, Mr. Brown, for calling. I'm sure. afraid I will not be able to allow you to win the gift prize, though. That's okay. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. Bye. Bye-bye. Who's next? Next we have Brian from Science and Engineering. Science and Engineering. Hey, Brian. Hi. Oh, I Brian? Hello? Hey, Brian. Okay, so hello. So what do you think going on with science and engineering magnet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's going on? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nobody's coming to visit? Sure, why not? Let me ask a question. Have you seen any of the Oh, uh, we, we love that President Bush. Wow, that's exciting, isn't it? I think that's very exciting. All right, you ready to work a problem? Sure. Are you AB or BC? Um, AB. AB, here we go. What's the area of the region bounded by y equals square root of x plus 1 and the x-axis from 1 to 3? Do you know what this, what, you want a picture first? Without a calculator, what would that look like? Um, it'd be a line, half of, half of a, half of a line. No, it's, it's, it's a cut. square root, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a big cut. Oh. It's a curve. It's a curve. It's a curve. Move which way? It's a curve going to the right. 
and it moved to the left one, right? Left, yeah. Because when x is minus 1, I'm here at 0. So it looks kind of like that, right? I just wanted a visual to go with it, and I want to integrate from 1 to 3. Tell me what to write. Okay, um, the integral from 1 to 3 of square root of... That's okay. right. Uh, is that right if I write to the half? Some of our students like to do the power. Is that okay with you? Are you there? Yeah. Okay, good. Is that all right if I write square root as a half? You want me to integrate it? Yes, please. Okay, um, it's going to be x plus 1 to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. All right, hold on one minute. You're exactly right. You added 1 to the power, and you divided by the new power, but you went on to invert and multiply. That's fine with me. All right, keep going. Okay, it's 1 and 3, so you're going to get 2 thirds times 4 to the 3 halves minus two-thirds times two to the three-halves. Great job. Let's clean it up just a little more. Let's keep the two-thirds out front. I think I'll do it that way. Is that okay with you? Sure. What's four to the three-halves? How do you think that one through? Um, it's going to be eight. All right. Tell me what. Tell me how you thought it through. Four um, to the... Uh, square root of four square root and of four then cubed. And two cubed is eight. Perfect. If you do the root first, it keeps the number smaller, doesn't it? All right. Minus... And how do you do this one? Square root of 2 and cube it. What, what do you want to do to that? So it's going to be 2 to 3 halves. Right, so square root of 2 cubed would be maybe a 2 root 2. Would that be okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah, wait, that's fine. And really, there's, you could leave it any number of ways probably. You, the trick is you got to get their answer if, if it's a multiple choice, haven't you? Hey, listen, you did a good job. Thank you very much. The error under the curve, you integrated, you accumulated, right? Yeah. I hope y'all have a great day tomorrow. That is really exciting. Quite a tribute, right? Okay. okay. Thank you. Bye. Right. Bye. I'll have to hear next week how that visit went. Maybe y'all call us back. Quincy, who's our next caller? Our next caller is Brittany from Molina yeah. High School. Hey, Brittany, how are you? I'm fine, are you? I'm fine, thank you. Here's your picture. Yay, Very, I'm beautiful. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Quincy is giving a... a no problem. Uh, evaluation of all wow, the pictures. you look pretty good. Thumbs up. Okay, thank you, Quincy. All right, let's see what we got for you. I really appreciate you guys calling in. Thanks. All right, here we go with a position function. Cosine of pi t minus sine of pi t from 0 to 2 pi. And I want the velocity function first, and then we'll try the velocity at 1. Wow. So let's have That's a velocity heavy. function first. How do you get from position to velocity? First you take the derivative. That's right. I'm going to say s of t derivative is how I get to velocity. I kind of wrote that backwards. I meant to do it the other way around. And so what is the velocity? Cosine, negative, negative sine. Right, with a chain out of what? Pi. Your favorite number, pi. All right, keep going. Minus. Minus. Cosine. Pi of t. And I forgot to leave room, but what do I have to chain out? Pi. Pi. All right, very good. Now we want to plug in a 1. So let me plug in. Can I just plug it in for you? Is that okay? Sure. I'm going to make you do the hard part. Oh, no. All right. What is the sine of pi? Um, negative 1. Sine of pi is how much? Negative 1. Is it negative 1? Let me think. It's 0. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It's 0. Sine function. So this is 0 minus... What's the cosine of pi? Negative 1. Oh, that's the negative 1. So what's my final answer? Pi. Don't you love problems like that that turn out to be pi? Sure. That is a great answer. Next to E, that's our favorite number, isn't it? That's my we favorite e number. Pi. Say it again. That's my favorite number. It is your favorite Pizza number. Pi. I like pi. That's, pi. that's my favorite number, too. Hey, thank you for calling in. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. You have a nice day. I will. You too, huh? All right. <laughs> Who's next, Quincy? We have Clifton from Lincoln High School. Thank you. Y'all been working hard? 
Yes, ma'am. No brakes, right? Ma'am. No brakes. Nah. Just hard work. Yes, ma'am. All right, you ready to work a problem? Can I get a BC problem? You know what? I usually just do ABs because most of the audience is ABs. So I might try to bring a BC next week. Would that be okay? No way, yeah. dude. You, I know you got to <laughs> you got to get ready for those AB questions too. Even though you we already been through them one time, right? All right. So all right, here we go. The integral. Excuse me. I I don't mean the integral. The derivative is three square root of t of some function v, and I've got v of one and I've got v of four, and this is a pretty good problem. I think I want to find v of four. I've got right. V of 1, I've got the derivative, and I need V of 4. Have you ever heard of a problem like this before? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what do I do? First, you want to take the derivative. Say no, it first, again? you want to take the integral. I'm going to integrate, that's right. Integrate from what to what? You want to integrate from, from 1 to 4. Yeah, how'd you know? Because that's what they're talking about, right? Yeah. That's yes, what they're talking about. Well, if I integrate from 1 to 4, what am I going to get over here? You're going this to is V prime. Oh, you're going to have V. V of 4. Yes, ma'am. Take away what? Uh, v of 1. I am. All right. Now, do we know V of 4? Uh, no, ma'am. No, that's what we're looking for. Do we know V of 1? Yes. We got it. Do we know the area under the curve, 3 square root of T, from 1 to 4? No, that's what we're trying well, to do. That may take a little work, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'll rewrite it up here. Can I write 3t to the 1 half? Yes, ma'am. All right. Tell me how to integrate. All right. First, you want to add 1 to the power. And what does that give me? That gives you uh, t to the 3 halves. All right. And divide by 3 halves is times what? Uh, 2 over 3. Good. And, that's gonna and I've got my plug-ins. I'm going to go over here. Can I just write 2? Yes, ma'am. T to the 3 halves with my plug-ins. All right, help me with my plug-ins. I'm going to draw a line here, line in the sand. All right, you want to have 2 times 4. Oh. oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You're saying the right thing. I just wrote it wrong. To the uh, 3 halves. Take away. Minus 2 times 1. I love 1 to the power, don't you? Yes, ma'am. All right. This is minus 2. I'll do the easy one. Now you do the hard one. All right. Well, first I'm going to take the... Uh, first I'm going to take the... Hold on. Square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2, and 2 cubed is? Um, 8. 8. And 16 take away 2 is? 14. Bingo. I'll go back over here. I'll put your 14 in for you. What is V of 4, please? V of 4 is 14. Say it again. 7. 21. Excellent. 21. Good job. V of 4 is 21. That is your fundamental theorem of calculus at work, isn't it? You did a great job. Is that our last caller, Quincy? Yes, ma'am. That's it for today. Quincy and I thank you for calling in. I want to thank my student host. He did a great job. Thank you, Ms. We have You're very welcome. You have uh, two gift certificates we're going to give to lucky callers. So Quincy's going to set up the calculator based on how many callers we had today. And we're going to see who those lucky winners are. And I'll bring these out in the next... Uh, 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 Number 16, Brian from Science and Engineering, and number 10, Jasmine from Carter High School. Congratulations. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you for calling in. I hope you're next week. Next week. Next week. Next week. Quincy and I are wishing you a five on the exam on May the 3rd. Work hard so that you can celebrate when those results come in. Bye-bye.